All right, guys, so we're nearing the end of the library workflow chapter. And up until this point, we basically used all the library uh, workflow functions as far as culling and then creating collections and organizing, uh, going in even further and creating keywords and keyword lists, uh, as well as adding copyright metadata and everything like that. Now I want to go back to filtering. And mainly, we talked about filtering before, but I want to give you guys some concrete examples of how filtering can basically really enhance your workflow. So previously when we talked about filtering, we were talking about mainly using this quick filter bar at the top of the film strip. Now I want to get into the full Lightroom functionality uh, for filtering. And to do that, I want to make sure that this filters menu is actually open. And we see it open right here. If, you're not, if it's not open, if this is what you see, then just click backslash. Hit backslash on your keyboard. It'll open up the library filters. And these are only available from the library module, by the way. So the first and probably most obvious thing you can use filters for is for finding specific images. So now that we've gone through and rated our images, I can say, let's say I want to find all the images that have leather covers. Uh, well, I can hit Control F, which is the hotkey for bringing up uh, our, our search field. And I can click any searchable field. I can also narrow it down if I want, but I want to keep it as any searchable field. I want to say contains, not all, but just contains in general. And I want to say just leather, not leather and girl. Just say leather. Now it's going to show me all the images that have the keyword leather in them anywhere. So it doesn't matter if it's in the file name. It doesn't matter if it's in the metadata. Wherever it sees leather, it's going to show me those images. Well, now let's say I have, this is particularly useful if there's more than just six images in this leather category. But if, if the keyword for leather had, say, 200 images, and maybe only five or 10 of them were actually selected for our, for our keepers, well, I want to see those images as the flagged images only. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an additional filter for attribute. Now when I click that, I'm going to click on this uh, attribute flag status right here. So right now it says no filter. When I click flagged, it's going to show me only flagged images that meet flag cr criteria as, as well as have the leather keyword in any of these searchable fields. Now I can get even more in detail. Again, this is really useful when there's more images than just like these two. But maybe I have 50 images that have girls, uh, the, the girl model with a leather cover that we're going to keep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say contains all. And I'm going to add an additional keyword by hitting comma and then saying girl. And now we have this, uh, this single image with that meets all this criteria. Previously, how we also talked about, you can also use those synonyms. So if you forget one of those keywords, maybe I type in like cowhide and girl. Well, we typed in previously how cowhide was actually a synonym for leather. Uh, so that actually appears as well. So it's showing anything that has a synonym of leather. All right, another really useful way to use filters in your workflow is for uh, the actual post-production process. I love to post-produce by specific cameras. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two filters so we have none. You can also click none right here to remove filters. You can also say right over here filters off and it'll do the same thing. So I'm going to click on metadata and the metadata is going to default to this default columns. It should unless you've changed it. But what we see here is the date, the camera, the lens, and the label. Now what I see under camera is the cameras that were used to shoot. Now let's say you went out with two uh, of your second shooters and you guys went and covered a corporate event and everybody's using a different camera. One person's on a 5D, one person's on a 60D, one person's on a Nikon D7000, whatever. Well, you're going to see all these cameras pop up and most likely, like if you go into a, say, a dark room, not a dark room, but let's say a, a banquet hall for this corporate event, everybody's going to probably switch to manual and be shooting with the same settings per camera. So it's really nice to be able to say, okay, I want to see all of the Canon 60D shots. And I can post-produce all of these. And what happens is most of the images on that Canon 60D, if they were shot in manual mode, are going to be very consistent. And so you can batch process all these images very, very quickly. So it's an easy way to, to kind of process all images from the same camera with the same settings. Another thing that's great is it's, a, it's an awesome way to be able to see what those second shooters shot. Maybe you are uh, trying out new shooters and you want to be able to give them critique and you want to be able to say, okay, this is what I like, this is what I didn't like. Well, you can single out their camera and actually see exactly what they shot and show them, give them some feedback on what you liked, see where their issues were at. You can load up one of these images, click I to see the information on how it was shot, or you can just view it in the metadata over here by selecting EXIF. And I can see all the information on how it was shot. Okay, so 
that's another way. And and by the way, if you guys have, let's say, a lot of times you'll go to these shoots and people will be shooting on the same camera. Maybe you guys all shot on a D7000 or a D3000, whatever you guys have. Well, instead of filtering by cameras, then you want to filter by camera serial number. And by serial number, you're going to see specific serial numbers, and every camera is going to have a different serial number. So you'll be able to see them and, and pinpoint them a little bit more detailed. And then what you can do is you can say, you can select one camera serial number and figure out who shot that camera. And then you can add that to the keyword list. So you can say, okay, Tommy shots. And now we can see all of Tommy shots by just clicking on the keyword list. And so we have that as, as one of the filters. And by the way, it went under back configuration because I forgot to turn that off. Okay, so that's a great way to be able to post-produce for specific cameras and specific settings. It's also a great way to see who shot what and provide feedback or to just in general find specific shots that maybe one person shot. Now another filter I love to use for my workflow is for ISO setting. Because what I like to do is I like to say all images that were shot at 800 ISO are going to have a little bit of noise reduction. At 1600 ISO are going to have a little bit more. 3200 ISO are going to have a little bit more and just apply the, uh, the noise reduction across the board for all these images. So what I like to do is basically select ISO. So I'm just going to click right here in my library filter and I'm going to click ISO speed. And now I can see all the different ISO settings. Okay, so now that I have selected 1600 ISO, I'm going to go to my develop module and once I'm in my develop module, you'll notice that the filter is still active. So I haven't turned off the filter, so if I flip to different modules like slideshow and print, it's still going to show the same seven images. So now in develop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up to my detail panel right here. So if your detail panel isn't open, just click right here to expand it. And then under noise reduction, I'm going to apply, say, 15 noise reduction because this image was shot at 1600 ISO. And I'm going to sync it across all these images that were shot at 1600 ISO. And don't worry, we'll go through this in more detail uh, as far as when we get to the develop module. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to click check none and only select the synchronized settings for noise reduction hit synchronize and voila all those images that were shot at 1600 ISO now have 15 noise reduction applied to each one of them and so it's a great way of finding these images that maybe were shot at specific ISO applying certain uh, settings to those images only one of the last features and I think one of the most important ones that we use with every single job is with image verification and basically what we do is whenever we upload a new card to our catalog I want to verify that every single card from that CF CF card uh, every single image from that CF card was imported into the into Lightroom and there was no errors so what I like to do basically is hit control F I do any searchable field and I do contains just do contains is fine and what I do is I, I flip open my uh, I flip on my camera and put in my CF card and I look at the first image and if the first image is image number 125 or whatever that image might be I click 125 and see if that first image shows up in my in my catalog I verify that it's there and then I switch to the last image on that CF card and type that one in and maybe the last image is image number 256 and obviously no photos match the filter right now because I've already renamed all the photos and stuff like that but if you're importing straight from the card and you're not renaming, doing this little file search to find the first and the last image is a great way of just verifying that everything made it into your Lightroom catalog safely and you're okay to clear your card. So long as you have those images securely backed up, of course. Alright guys, so hopefully we gave you guys some good ideas on how to use filtering in your workflow and how it can be a, a real powerful aid in the workflow and not just a tool for finding images.